79 series really seem to divide people. You either love them or you hate them. I'm going to give you an honest review from someone that's owned one and uh, why I would buy one again. So I think it's about time someone does an honest review of the 79 series Land Cruiser, the pros and the cons, and this is coming from someone that owns one. This, this video is going to really relate to most four-wheel drives and there's a lot of opinion out there on the internet and um, most, of, most of the opinion comes from people that don't, only, don't actually own these vehicles. So I'll quickly run through what I've done to mine. Yes, you have to put a center console and a stereo in them because they're, they're terrible. That's a Toyota thing. Um, I fitted a long-range tank. Um, the Brown Davis Extra 110, that's been fantastic. Got a Lovells for 3900 JVM upgrade with a ginormous leaf pack. Mickey Thompson 285, 75, 16s and 16 inch Steelys. Patrol Doctor Airbox, lithium batteries under the bonnet, tune, clutch, but we'll get into that later. Catch can, fuel filter, a stainless steel water tank under the tray, that's 100 litres, that's really handy. Full pump system that can suck from the river and the bar area which is the most important obviously and i've tried to keep the thong slap to a minimum left the dpf in with a three and a half inch torque exhaust those things don't even have power windows so they do actually come with power windows full power windows front and rear full climate control super easy to use early model camry head unit Early model Toyota Camry steering wheel, cruise control, some little speakers you can barely hear once you get to highway speed, one factory cup holder, and uh, lift the floor up here, the carpet, and there's absolutely zero sound bending. It's, um, it, it is very basic inside, that's for sure. One of the things I actually do take seriously, and it is it is a real shame, is I still run they still run a lap sash seat belt in the in the center, which in this day and age that's really not good enough and if you want to put a child restraint in these you actually have to go to the aftermarket because there is nowhere to attach the the, the um kid seat to yeah they ride they ride pretty firm i'll be honest um it takes some getting used to but the offshoot of that is um, because we bought this to tow once once you're hooked up with the van and you're fully loaded the thing drives nice and true and straight down the road so again it's a compromise uh, we really set it up with a heavy, heavy leaf spring pack, so I knew the thing would stay in the middle of the road. So if you set a four-wheel drive up nice and soft, so it's really comfortable all the time, you put a heavy load on that and it, it starts walking all over the road. We've had it, I've, I've done it before. Um, so that's the compromise we made, even buying the 79 in the first place. Being a leaf sprung rear, it's never gonna be as good as a sprung rear vehicle. Another really big topic is how noisy they are on the highway. Um, the wind noise around the door jams, it, you can definitely hear it, but it's, it's definitely not a deal breaker. Um, it's not as bad as everyone makes out. A lot of the people that make these claims don't seem to ever own these vehicles. So really test it for yourself. I mean, I'm not, it's, it's no 200 series or, or any dual cab ute would be better for that matter, like I won't lie, um, but it's just not a deal breaker for me. It's, it's, a, it's a compromise again. <laughs> are they really good as a full drive um that's that's a hard one like they come twin locked um they're solid front and rear axles they're, they're reasonably built reasonably tough i mean that's subjective that's what i believe um but your rear leaf spring hangers are, are definitely something to get hung up on like we really haven't done any or much hardcore four driving in this uh, I'm getting older and touring is more my thing but um, I have had an occasion where we got hung up on the the, the rear the rear spring mounts um, we I've owned a few four drives in the past and one of them was an FJ Cruiser and that a really you know divide opinion again we seem to buy these cars that divide opinion a lot I believe it, it was probably a better four drive even though it was a IFS front end um, it was a lighter vehicle the ground clearance were better, the shorter wheelbase made better ramp over angles, the, the departure angle was really good, front and rear overhangs were super short, 
So if you just bought a Ford, like a, you were just buying a four-wheel drive to do hardcore four-wheel driving off the showroom floor, I don't know if this is the, the car for you. Um, sure, you can make it into an off-road weapon. You can put coil rear ends in it and short trays and 37-inch tyres and... But I mean, that's, that's getting extreme. As far as the fundamentals of the car go, this is probably not the best car to go straight straight into hardcore full driving. To be honest, you're probably better off in like a, an older GE Patrol. Um, that's that's Toyota, Nissan, I don't care. If you were to buy a car for hardcore off-roading, I don't think this is it. The old VDJ 4.5 litre V8, um, off, off the showroom floor, it it will disappoint you. It is very underwhelming. Like I never test drove one of these before I bought it, um, and I, I know I didn't. I knew I didn't need to because for me there was no other real car that could do what we wanted to do without spending even more money. Like and you know we had a budget. Um, so on the highway on on the drive home, mate, I was just like, wow, these things are as slow as everyone says. Um, I mean, like, yes, yeah, she could live with it and just poke around and, mate, I, I could. Me personally, this has been tuned and tuned, it is fantastic. Like, it is still not like off the light fast, but you put three and a half ton behind it and I can sit on 100 k's everywhere. And like the car itself is three and a half to four ton. So I don't know what other vehicle you would buy in this price bracket. And yes, you do have to spend, like you don't have to do everything I've done, but there are some things I feel are, are nearly a must when you buy one of these and tuning it, tuning it, new clutch, uh, are probably the one of the, a couple of the things that you really need to do. Um, so what other vehicle, say the purchase price plus those couple of things, what other vehicle for the price can tow three and a half ton that well? I, I just, I couldn't find another vehicle in a ute that is. Um, that's that's another reason we ended up with it. Oh, I'm glad I'm not in there right now. The fuel, uh, the fuels. I really don't think they're bad on fuel. Um, they get beat up a bit on on the fuel. I'm probably sticking up for them here. I've owned non-turbo diesels, I've owned petrols, I've owned small capacity turbo diesels, this being a larger capacity turbo diesel. It all comes down to weight. It doesn't matter the engine, the size of the engine, turboed or not, although turbo in theory should make it more efficient. Uh, so just to give you an example, probably not towing and really looking after it, you, you might see 14s. Um, a smaller trailer, 16 to 17. Um, three and a half ton on the back and so I, we, we actually got the whole setup weighed and we're a bit over seven ton 7.1 ton uh, I, I usually average around 22 litres per hundred now to put that into perspective the FJ Cruiser we had uh, towing just on two tons so the whole setup was under probably under five ton uh, it used to use more fuel like 22 23 24 I mean it was a petrol and I'm not beating up on petrols either because I don't think I don't think that, that was that bad and um, it wouldn't stop me from owning a petrol again. It was a fantastic car. Uh, so uh, yeah, fuel fuel usage, I think it's about the same as any other car you buy relative to the weight that the car weighs and what you're towing. So is the 79 series Land Cruiser perfect? Absolutely not, but it is perfect for what we bought it for. And if your four-wheel drive is perfect for what you bought it for, that's all that matters. Don't forget, visit www.smarttouringsystems.com.au. If you love camping, four-wheel driving and touring, there's a good chance there's something on our website that'll interest you guys. Thanks to everyone that liked, subscribed and shared our videos. The support is, is much appreciated. And don't forget, you only live once, so get out there and enjoy it. Cheers.